Hello everybody, my name is Nihil and today I want to start just a tiny little experimental kind of series and it's going to be about Microsoft Flight Sim X, uh, which is something I've been getting into just starting out with it um, a couple of days ago. Uh, this is not, okay, a disclaimer, this is not going to be a tutorial. I am not an experienced pilot in real life or in flight sims whatsoever. Okay, I'm new. So what this is, is um, I'm literally going to learn how to fly with you. Right, we're gonna fail, we're probably gonna crash at points, it's gonna be ridiculous, but I think that's the charm, you know, this is a flight sim, it's meant to be tested, it's, it's, you're kind of meant to learn with it, and I am not very good, I'm gonna kind of, I have researched a bit, uh, out of interest, so I know a couple of things, some of them might even be wrong, some things I just flat out might not know, and feel free to point them out in the comments, I'm perfectly fine with that, just try not to be a dick, basically, that's, that's kind of the, the rule I go by, okay, because then I'll probably just ignore you, but if you do have valuable input, and, and you know, just realize I know I'm, I'm aware that this is what I'm doing when I fly any aircraft is probably against all regulations but um, I want to get better so um, you know if you feel like it if you know what you're doing let me know that's cool uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very you know positive I, I like constructive uh, criticism just don't be a dick about it and that's cool so uh, other things I want to say here we're learning how to fly together right that's the idea of the series um, and we are going to start out here with flight some X this is uh, on Steam which is really cool it was really cheap I got it for like five bucks which is incredibly cheap for the software uh, from a sale on Steam a couple of uh, days ago I have like 20 hours in it I've played around with it I've done some research I've watched some other people some popular flight sim people uh, so that's where I know my very basics from, or at least I hope I know them. Um, another thing is we're going to just use the stock program. I have zero uh, like extensions or add-ons activated or installed here. We're just going to use stock aircraft. So you don't need anything except from your computer. Uh, you probably a monitor <laughs> and some sort of uh, uh, input device as well as the game uh, Flight Sim X by Microsoft, of course. Uh, as far as input device is concerned, uh, I do not have a flight stick or kind of like an HOTAS uh, hands-on kind of uh, deal like a throttle quadrant and a flight stick. I would love to have that. I do not have that. Uh, I tried uh, keyboard and mouse and thought it was unusable. So what I use is actually my Xbox 360 gamepad. Um, and, uh, you know, I think a lot of people have these things nowadays. Uh, so if you don't have a joystick or a flight stick or something better, try, give that a try because with, with the keyboard and mouse, it's pretty damn hard to fly. Uh, so what we're going to do here in this first installment is a flight, uh, a real flight um, that we're going to do that I've done several times now. And uh, we'll we'll check it out here. Let's let's go to free flight. Um, okay, I do want to mention one thing actually before we set this up is uh, in the settings uh, under realism. Well, as, as you can see here, I've turned all this up and you can copy my settings here. I think those are relatively realistic. Uh, the auto rudder, if you are using, if you don't have uh, rudder controls on your gamepad or flight stick, then you want to activate this. But I have them on my gamepad. It's the trigger, the trigger accesses. So I can disable that. Uh, everything else, you can do, like, you don't have to copy my settings here. These are, I think, as hard as they can get. Um, but you can, you can, I mean, like, if you're still having problems with, with stuff, you can turn these down. And uh, this is probably going to make my landing pretty, pretty tricky on the freaking Xbox 360 pad. But we'll see how it goes. Uh, I don't really care. I just don't want the game to sugarcoat any simulation aspects to me. That's why I do this. Apart from that, this shouldn't matter, if, you know. It's all good. So let's let's actually look into this flight that we're going to do here today. Uh, first of all, the aircraft. Uh, I, I decided to go with a, a Cessna C-172 Skyhawk, which is very popular uh, in, in real life and especially popular uh, when it comes to flight school because uh, this is a very simple to fly plane. And that's really good for us. If you are new, you can try the 747 if it's the thing you're after. I definitely did that myself, but you're probably going to crash it because it's quite the intricate machine. This is still intricate, but this is a little bit more easy. So uh, that's why we're using this aircraft here. Um, let's check out the weather. We're going to set it to fair weather. It should be by default. It's just because we don't really care about, you know, any of like, 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 
at a thunderstorms or something right now. We just want an easy, perfect, situational flight where everything goes well. Um, we're not going to mess with current location or current time and season on the right side here because we're going to use the flight planner, okay? Um, and now the first things we can choose here is like our, our departure and our destination, obviously. And here's a route that I've seen another, uh, I think it's Matt Davis on, on YouTube. He's uh, like a popular flight sim guy, you look him up. Um, and he, I think it was him at least, who flew this route from Biggin Hill to um, Le Havre, which is uh, in France. So we're flying the channel from England to France, southern England to northern France. And it, it's, this one's called, the, the airport is called Octaville in Le Havre. Um, so this is kind of going to be our route here. And we just set this up. Um, actually, uh, we don't want to start on the active runway, okay? When we have this uh, departure uh, airport setting here, this dialogue, we can choose where we want to start. And the reason, you can start on the active runway and just literally, you know, push down the throttle and then take off, right? But we, I'm not going to be like the sim guy that's going to run through checklists for an hour before taking off, because, simply because I don't have that level of knowledge yet. Okay, so, um, but I do know, I, I I think skipping like that, like starting on the active runway is a little bit boring. It takes away from some of the, um, some of the challenges you have before the flight even starts. So I do want to keep the level of, of immersion uh, a little bit higher by not starting on the active runway, just kind of jumping into, into life there, but actually kind of start in a parking spot. And I picked parking one, which is a ramp, general aviation small. So we are small aircraft, so we're parked and this would be like, like it would be in real life uh, pretty much so this is going to be our departure um we do want to keep in mind the ident of our airport this is this i think it's called the ident it's the basically the uh the signature here of the airport that we're flying to because we'll need this later and this one is lfoh okay Next thing, we're gonna check I IFR. This is, uh, these are two different kinds of flights or flight rules, visual or instrument. In uh, Cessna, um, we can generally say most of the times we're gonna be flying visual, okay? It doesn't fly very high, it's not that many clouds outside, like under the aircraft, so you're gonna fly visual. But I actually think that it's in, in this particular flight sim, when you kind of know what you're doing, it's actually easier to do an instrument flight. Instrument flight means we're gonna get a route pre-programmed into our GPS and we can use that and the autopilot in conjunction to kind of fly the plane for us for the for the most part so we don't have to worry so much about navigation visual flight rules means like in real life you would kind of uh, as far as i know you would just look at uh, motorways in england for example or or um, you know highways in america and other kind of uh, you know cities like like things you can can kind of like like landmarks that you can kind of tell uh, are there and navigate like that but that's a little bit more difficult and you'd need a chart for that and stuff and we're just going to use the gps here um also note that we're not going to do anything, um, basically we're going to learn how to fly from anywhere to anywhere else, right? Some other people kind of note down frequencies that they need for landing later on and stuff like that, but then it's always only valid for one airport because the frequencies are different. What we want to learn is how to actually fly from anywhere to anywhere else with a GPS. Uh, we even get the power to to, to like change our, our, our destination to an alternate airport if we feel like it, stuff like that. We want to be flexible, um, just like you would be in real life. And we're going to say we're going to fly low altitude airways. Um, which means we can click the find route button and we'll get a route. And the reason why I picked the same route that this uh, YouTuber, which I, again, I think was Matt Davis, uh, it shows in one of his tutorials is because it's, first of all, it's kind of nice. Uh, it's, it flies over the, the Atlantic Ocean, the, the channel here. And also we have quite a number of little waypoints here and, and the ATCs, ATCs are air traffic controllers. These are the guys that talk to us from the ground, from airports or, or other uh, radio stations. And uh, usually they do kind of um, track you around the your actual flight plan. This is your flight plan. This is what you do before you take off, right? It, it, it generated it for us here. And we'll see a list of uh, waypoints. But there's always the chance in an instrument flight, which we're doing, that they are going to tell you from the ground, you know, uh, change your course. Okay, use a different heading. And usually on this flight that happens. Let's set a cruising altitude. 10,000 feet is absolutely 
over what the uh, Cessna should be able to fly at, as far as I know. I don't actually know what the max altitude is for this aircraft, but the, the altimeter, which we're going to talk about in a second, actually doesn't go that high. It stops at 10,000 feet, so I'm pretty sure you shouldn't go that high. Uh, also, the cabin, I don't think, is uh, pressurized in any way, so you know, probably is not a good idea to fly that high. We're going to choose 4,000 feet, and we can always request uh, a flight level increase, which means, you know, let's ask the people on the ground, can we get higher up into the air, or can we get lower? Um, if they're going to be clouds in the way, we, you know, we can use that to make sure we have uh, a little bit of visual reference if we wanted to, even though we don't really need it because we're not doing a visual flight. Let's just hit OK. We did all the setup. Um, you can see there's a couple of routes that have flown so far, just small stuff, uh, pretty much. Also, I've done this route before. Let's just hit save. You have to do this as far as I know. You can organize your flight plans. Uh, you can you can load them in later to fly a route again, stuff like that. So uh, it also asks us if we want to move our aircraft. Yes, we want to. And then everything is almost set up. We just want to click this change button, double check. Yep, that is still says parking one. Again, not active runway because we don't want to skip that. And also, if you just notice here, there's some time zone calibration that, F, uh, that, that FSX likes to do for you, which I think makes no sense. So let's just reset the time. It's going to pick the current time, which is 6 p.m. here, uh, my time, right now. And uh, that's okay. Um, actually, let's make it a little bit earlier. We don't really want to get into... Uh, into any kind of um, night scenario or darkness scenario here on this flight. Again, fair weather, you know, clear day. It's just perfect flying day here for us. And that's good for our very first tutorial flight. Or I said it wasn't a tutorial, sorry. For our first uh, flight. Uh, we could mess with other things here. Um, failures are all off. We don't, again, want anything going wrong here. Uh, we're not even going to mess with fuel and payload. It doesn't matter to us right now. Let's just hit the fly now button.